Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Listen, I'm glad to have you guys here on this Thursday, the 10th of September, 2020. You know, ne things are really off kilter right now. <laughs> you guys, all, all of you out there in my audience, you all know that things are not right. Way off. Things are way off. And, you know, if we go back to 2008, look at what almost happened. They said they, they come within two hours of a world meltdown of the financial system. Things were good back then compared to now. Everything's so far out of whack now. Back then, everything was more close to the straight and narrow. Now, it's just absolutely ridiculous. And I want to show you guys something. Uh, let's get the chart started right here. Take a look at this. What possible disruption is coming that requires China to start massive stockpiling of all possible commodities? Well, you know, they might call it stockpiling of commodities in China right now. But you know what it really amounts to? It's prepping. It's a nation state. A superpower, in fact. Prepping. They're prepping. As a country, they're prepping. And like I say, uh, what do they know that we don't know? I mean, most of our population doesn't know. Because most of the population out there right now, most of the people out there think everything's just fine. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys what. Let's take a look at the silver price today. Uh, 2693 and it's down three cents. Okay. You see this commodity right here, silver. Silver and gold, all the way through history, have been the two, they've been monetary units all the way through history up until now. And just the fact alone that they're not monetary units right now shows you, so, sort of ring alarm bells, something is definitely wrong right now in our society. Something is structured completely wrong. And I'm going to tell you something else. All the way through history, silver had a set price of what it was worth. Uh, they had, back in the Roman times, they had something called a denarii, which was a little tiny silver coin. It was the size of the dime that we have today. And even in the modern day, up until 1964, we had a dime, a silver dime. Uh, it always had a certain set buying power back in the ancient world. A, a denarii-sized piece of silver, which is one-tenth, basically more or less one-tenth of an ounce. Actually, it's a little bit under one-tenth of an ounce. It was worth what they called a day's work. A day's work, you get paid a denarii, a little thing of silver, right? So for 10 days' work, and back in those days, they didn't work eight hours and take lunch break, two-hour lunch break, and take a coffee break every 15 minutes, 15-minute 15 long coffee breaks. No, they this was hard labor. And they would continue at it for like 10 hours to complete a day, or even 12 hours back in Roman times to complete a day's work. You know, and I mean, by the time you're done, you'd be just bone tired from maybe shoveling all day, you know, or whatever, you know, uh, maybe planting all day or whatever, you know, be bone tired. And you get this one little silver coin that was equal to just slightly under one tenth of an ounce. And that's what it was worth. Well, what would a day's labor like that be worth today? A hard slogging probably closer to two hundred dollars okay so what could you buy a silver with two hundred bucks today you know you could buy what six ounces or something seven ounces something like that seven full ounces so that means that you'd be getting 70 times as much silver as in ancient times for the same amount of labor 70 times more with today's money and what's today's money worth compared to what, what's today's labor worth compared to silver? You know, one of the big reasons why this discrepancy has occurred is the fact that modern machinery has come out that enables them to just basically pillage the world's silver supply. To strip mine it out of the ground so fast to deplete all the mines so fast. And so we've had the good times with silver. That's what we've done. And now what we see is ore grades dropping off, uh, dropping off a cliff. That means it's much more harder to get an ounce of silver out of a ton 
of ore. That's because they've stripped and cleaned all the good stuff. They pillaged it already. It's gone. And in fact, a study was done by the uh, by the U.S. Geological Survey a few years ago, and they said silver is going to be the first metal to go into uh, what they call uh, it's becoming extinct, basically, on the Earth. Is because they're stripping it all out. They're not replacing it. They're putting it in televisions and cell phones and in everything you can think of. Handheld devices and everything. And all those devices end up in the landfill. Where the cost to recover that silver from the landfill approach it per ounce is, is much greater than digging it out of a mine. It's much more difficult to, to reprocess it out of, out of used televisions or whatever. Much more difficult. It, it probably cost eight, nine hundred dollars an ounce to reclaim it. It costs approaching the price of gold to reclaim it. But you know what I'm going to tell you guys? They will be reclaiming it, and they'll be making money reclaiming it. That's how high silver is actually going to go in the end. They will be digging through for, for gold and silver. They'll be digging through and, and tearing old land. They'll be digging into the ground in old, in old landfills and pulling old computers and laptops out of the ground that are all covered with earth, breaking them apart, pulling out the circuit boards, using acid and stuff to, 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 to dissolve the silver off of them. And, and then they will be refining that silver into little tiny ingots and selling it back into the market for a profit when it costs about $900 an ounce to do that. They will be doing that in the end. Okay, let's move on and take a look now at the gold price. Uh, 1954 for gold price. You know, they've been doing that with gold for a while now. They've been, they've been taking the better circuit boards, the ones that have more gold on them, like, like the uh, parts inside the computer that have quite a heavy amount of gold on them. And they've been doing that for quite a while, recovering gold that way. But they will be recovering silver that way, too. You know, and, and uh, there's going to be a new gold rush, new silver rush. And uh, that's what's coming, because uh, this is the only value behind the whole world's financial system, which is teetering on the brink. Uh, and it can't go but one direction. We know where this is going to end. This is going to end with, with inflation and then more inflation. And then in the end, people will completely lose confidence and then it'll move into a hyperinflation worldwide. We've never experienced a worldwide hyperinflation before. It's always been localized. The local at one local area where they can use some other different currency or gold and silver or dollars. Most times they use the dollar as, as something of value to, uh, to, during their hyperinflation. What are they going to use a value this time when all of the fiat currencies are going down together? You know, they're going to want a currency that's not going down. Well, gold and silver, they've demonetized it now. It's not really a currency anymore, but you know what? I'll give you guys a hint. There are currencies out there that are not going to go down with this. And they've been designed for the modern age. You know, and I mean for the age of, of, of the age of the Internet of Things, these new currencies. And they're just waiting. They're just waiting for this to happen. Uh, okay, cryptocurrency today. What we're looking at is $337 billion. Uh, Bitcoin dominance of 56.6%. And we're looking at a Bitcoin price of 10334 the stock market, the Dow today, you know, it was up just a minute ago. It was up. I was going to do my report and say it's up. It was up like uh, 40 points or whatever. And now it's down 106. Moved down just that quick. Oh, well, they'll have to get the golden mouse out again, won't they? <laughs> I'll tell you, honestly, they did the golden mouse trick way back in 1929 when the stock market crashed. Quite literally, they went marching in with with millions and millions of dollars and just said, "We want to buy stocks." And they bought they bought the stock uh, indices and it went back up a little bit again. You know, they they're trying to halt the crash of 1929. They poured tremendous amounts of money in trying to halt it, but they couldn't stop it in the end. Uh, but there was a, a problem that they had in 1929 that they don't have today: limit limiting factor. 
to how much money they could print was the fact that the money was backed by gold. Okay? Today we don't have that limitation. The Fed can print any amount of money they want. So it's just a matter of typing a, a, a trillion dollars in on their little keyboard, you know, and, and pushing that in there and seeing what it does. And if that don't do it, add an extra zero, make it 10 trillion. If that don't do it, add another zero, make it 100 trillion, whatever they want. And so, you know, that's what's supporting this market now. You know, they don't have that limitation of the currency backed by gold anymore. But there's also no limitation to the currency to keep it from hyperinflating. So for you guys out there that think that we're going to have a repeat of the Great Depression and we're going to see the dollar go way up in value, we better think a little bit more carefully because there was a big difference back then. The dollar was pegged to gold, and now it's not. That's a huge difference, guys. Okay, let's take a look now at crude oil. 37.72, and it's down 33 cents on the day. Bonds and rates. We're looking at a mixed bag, and it's not mo not much movement there. It's not even one basis point. So uh, we're just going to quote the prices of 0 0.70 for the 10-year and uh, 1.46 on the 30-year. What's the dollar doing today? 93.18 today, and it's uh, it's going along mostly sideways. It went down a little bit, and now it's went back up a little bit, and it's leveled off right where it was when it started this morning. 93.17. You guys have a great rest of the day. Like and subscribe. Don't forget those thumbs up. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.